Hey, what's up everybody? Colby from Sanitarium Productions. We're back again with another G.I. Joe toy offering here. Uh, this time we have for you the G.I. Joe vs. Cobra Destro's Dominator. Uh, this one was released in 2001, I think, which is uh, kind of hard to believe that it's been out for 14 years now. Uh, kind of crazy but so this one comes with the uh, dominator vehicle itself and it also comes with the destro figure this particular one or this issue of it uh it actually is in a kind of a gold and black color scheme the vintage line from back in what 1988 89 something around that uh came in a red color scheme so um i'm kind of anxious to see what this one looks like in comparison with the original vintage line one but uh theoretically it is the same mold so it should be the exact same toy just in a dip nah, excuse me a different color scheme uh, so what we're going to do is uh, just uh, unbox this thing for you put it together and see where we can go from there stick around So here's the boxed version of the Destro's Dominator from the G.I. Joe vs. Cobra line. As you can see, it's got some really nice box art here showing Destro and the tank, and there's like a castle or something in the background. And I'm going to assume this is like Cobra Island or something like that. So, yeah. On the back of it, shows kind of the blueprints of the vehicle itself with the actual production image the file card for Destro here overall it's really nice it's very much the same as uh, some of the traditional packaging we had at the, the uh, back side shows some of the other characters you can collect G.I. Joe and Cobra a couple of the vehicles they had out at the time proof of purchase no flag points anywhere but uh, they kind of did away with that a long time ago so and the top simple and effective so yeah overall the box version is pretty nice again considering that this came out in 2001 something to that effect so yeah kind of cool so let's see what we got to do to get this thing unboxed there's tape on this side and it looks like a little bit of tape on this side as well so we're just going to start by cutting the tape open. And we're going to flip it over so everything comes out nice and easy like. See if we can zoom out a little bit to get this. So as you can note here, the uh, there's a bit of tape here keeping the figure in. So we'll have to cut that real quick. Slide it up the far side. Falling out in sticker sheets. Favorite thing that's in the box. So throw that off to the side. We've got not a lot here actually. Uh, some packaging. Don't need that. 
I'm just going to go ahead and uh, cut off the rest of the figure here from the box and discard the package. Just like that. More trash. And yeah, that's what we have. We've got a bag here, the main vehicle, the treads, figure, the sticker sheet, and blueprints. So. Ooh, that's everything that ships with it, so there we go. We'll zoom in a little bit and take a look at this stuff individually. First, we'll just take a look at the uh, bag of paperwork. A little piece of tape here in the center, keeping it together, so. Just a quick slice of the blade. We have a sticker sheet. I'll get you a scan of that up close so you can kind of see it a little bit better. And the blueprints. And I'll get you a scan of that also so you can see it. So. Oh, cool. So that's that. This bag of parts this looks to be helicopter blades, a couple of cannons, and some missiles. Slice. More trash. Rotor blades, missiles, guns. Missile assemblies, small guns. That's what's in that box. Just want to point out here real quick um, on the uh, canopy lids and things. There appears to be some kind of gunk or I don't know if this is spray paint or what this is. But there's something all over the canopies. And it doesn't seem to be... Uh, like a plastic sheet or anything like that over it, so. I don't know, we'll have to clean these, I guess, and see once we get it together. But, uh, yeah, that's a little weird. It almost looks like the little air bubbles off of, you know, if you had a protective layer of plastic on these things or something. But it's also on the front of this thing, so I don't know if that's some kind of mildew or what that is but it seems to be all over the front again this thing has been in the box for 15 years so you know who knows you can see a little bit of it right there still and here in the front and just weird but that's not going to stop us so most of this already comes pre-assembled, so there's really not all that many steps here for us to, to do, but uh, we're going to go ahead and go through them anyways. The first step is to attach these um, exhaust pipes, or whatever the devil you want to call them, to the ship. And according to the uh, blueprints, it wants the... Um, so there's a little uh, ridged vent looking part here. Uh, that needs to go to the rear of the ship and there are these peg holes that will attach somewhere um, actually I guess the cannons will probably attach to that but uh, on the side here let's see if we can zoom in to show you this here other direction I suppose There are two little, I don't know what you call these things, just grooves. Uh, and those line up with the sides of the ship itself. There are two of these little um, peg things here. So uh, basically you just take this thing, put the vents to the back of the ship, and you just slide this on top.
line up like so. And just press down on it. And then the same thing for the other side. Line up the uh, grooves with the little tabby things. Just press down on it until it snaps in place. And these don't seem to be making a huge snapping sound like some of the old ones do, but uh, that's okay. They're in place. So. The instructions actually don't say anything about uh, the tank treads or anything like that, so uh, we're just going to have to put these on ourselves, which is kind of weird, um, but you know, that's the way it is. I also note that that uh, kind of gunk stuff or air bubbling effect is on the tank treads as well. So, yeah, no big deal. I may take it apart and clean it at some point, but uh, it's here anyway. So, um, essentially what we're going to be doing here, you've got... On the tank treads themselves, there are two big tabs. The smaller tab, uh, and as you can see, it's so one of them sticks up a little bit further than the other one, and one is closer to the back than the other one. So you want the uh, the one that's closest to these grill panels, the front side of this. This goes towards the front of the vehicle. So we're gonna grab the other one. We're going to put it on here. So there are these little latch kind of hinges on the sides here. And on the actual tank treads themselves, there are just a couple of openings for that. So all you'll do is just take and put that in place. Um, just kind of line it up a little bit and you'll sink one in first and then just press in on the other one. It just snaps in place like that. And then it's a hinge joint. So it will swing inwards and outwards and stop right there. So we'll do that to the other side as well. Find your hinged points right here. Stick one of them in. And just squeeze the other one a little bit to get it to go into place. Oops. And it just kind of fits just like that. And then the hinges just hinge inward. So something it didn't say in the instructions, but that's kind of the way it works. So uh, let's go on to the next one then. Step one. Slide exhaust onto hooks on side of vehicle. Repeat for other side. Step two. Attach missiles and side gun to track tread. So we have four missiles and we've got two of these side guns. We're just going to open up the tank treads just like that so that it sits with that up. Uh, the side guns just mount to these uh, pegs in the center and they just snap in place one on each side there's a hole and then the peg just take that and just press it into the hole and it just snaps in there and then the guns will rotate up and down Then there are four of these missiles. You put two on each side. There's a slot in the back of them that just lines up with the uh, little tab. Oh, I'm gonna break this thing. All right, so these things just pop out. So we're just gonna pop it back in place. It's uh, not exactly the sturdiest thing in the world. this thing popped off as well we'll fix that in a minute <laughs> anyways um, these things just attach to the front you just press down they don't really stay in place very well they do so 
two of these per side, one in the front, one in the back. Just press down on it. Turn it around. Do the same thing for the other side. One in the back, one in the front. And while we're here, let's go ahead and reattach this stupid thing. I really want these things to snap, but they're not snapping, so we'll assume it all is good. So there's some plastic pieces that come out of the box too, but that's okay. Step three, snap rotor blades onto vehicle. So these are the rotor blades. As you can see, uh, out of the box, they are bent a little bit. Um, I guess they just warp in their spreading upwards. Uh, a lot of times with like the tomahawk, these things have a tendency to droop downwards. So it's interesting to see that these are drooping upwards. But uh, yeah, so these just fan out like so. And there's just a single peg on the bottom of it. And there's a single peg hole on the top of the vehicle. So all we do is flip this thing up and just latch it in place. And then that spins and that's our rotor blades so step four insert missiles into launcher and press button to fire so on the front of this thing there is a swivel mounted cannon and it doesn't come with an extra missile uh, so you just have to actually take the missiles that are on the side off and it doubles as the firing missiles so you just uh, put it into place like so and then on the back there is this little missile launcher button uh, let's see here you just press down on it and the missile fires so yeah so you have four missiles that come with it uh, that are actually mounted on the treads and they fire out of the front there so yeah that's kind of rinky dink but it's all right it doesn't say anywhere in the instructions what to do with these cannons here uh, but it does show them being mounted onto the exhaust system so we're just going to go ahead and there's just a, a hole here and a peg here so you just press them into place and then they rotate up and down one on each side and of course this thing comes off very easily so let's just go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit so y'all can see a little bit closer so there is the hole here and you just take this and just press it into place and it just snaps in there and rotates so and we're gonna have to mount this thing one more time on this stupid thing it just goes on there and you just press down and I really want them to snap in place but they're not going to so eh, that's fine step five to convert from tank to helicopter, fold in track treads, pull out tail section, and extend rotor blades. So, essentially when you're in the tank mode, uh, yeah, so I'll go ahead and point that out here while I'm at it. Only two of these rotor blades actually pivot. The third one is stationary. It will not turn so you always know which orientation it goes in because it won't let you do anything other than that so when you're in tank mode like this you want all of the blades folded to the back then to convert it to helicopter mode you just spin the rotor blades out to the side then it wants you to fold the treads in and they will snap in place 
you will have to turn the cannon if it's in the way then it wants you to pull this out like that which is kind of cool but uh, don't really know what good that does but uh, okay so that's helicopter mode yeah and that's essentially it so back to tank mode and there you have it and here we have the Destro figure that comes with the vehicle on the back you've got a couple of these plastic tabs that are still attached with tape so we're just going to slice the tape on them them up flip it over and then this plastic just pulls off of the little yellow card back and bingo Destro is free and that becomes trash now so here is the figure uh, this is again from 2001 so the uh, mold on these things is um, a little clunky uh, by today's standards but for you know 15 years ago it wasn't bad uh, they are very kind of cartoonish looking in appearance uh, very large upper bodies very small legs and things like that and then the head is kind of cartoonish also but uh, articulation wise head rotates around the uh, waist swivels legs bend up and down both of them fairly well a hinge at the knee no foot articulation uh, the arms spin all the way around there is a swivel joint at the elbow and then the elbows also move in and out uh, no wrist articulation or anything like that but uh yeah, pretty typical of the v the figures of that era. Or so uh, he does not come with any accessories, no weapons or anything like that, which is kind of silly for an arms dealer to not have weapons. But what are you going to do? It was 2001. For a quick comparison, we have our trusty 25th anniversary beachhead figure, so you can kind of see what they look like in comparison. Each head is a little bit taller, not quite as stocky, uh, but yeah, overall it's not too bad. Destro color-wise, it's a kind of a greenish olive drab color for his main costume, and it's just got some red accents and some silver accents, and yeah, that's pretty much it, so couple of cobra symbols painted on in silver nice black belt but yeah so, there is the destro figure for some size comparisons we have the destro figure here in front so you can see the scale of the actual vehicle itself um, the canopies open, one flips to the front, one flips to the rear, take the figure, sits in there pretty well, and you can sit in any of the seats pretty well. And that's about it for uh, being able to fit figures in here. There's not a whole lot of extra space. We'll note that when you lock him into place here, his arm sticks out a little bit there, but uh, I guess he's not too worried about being able to hear inside his helicopter or his tank. 
there are no extra little points of uh, no foot pegs or anything like that anywhere else on the, the vehicle even when you uh, convert this thing into the uh, helicopter mode there's not really any extra places for figures to go or anything so it's a simple two-man vehicle and it works pretty well so yeah overall it's not too bad the gold color the yellow with the gold and the black uh, it works pretty well there's a little Gatling gun right here it does have some nice sculpture to it doesn't turn really well but it does turn the guns rotate everywhere the helicopter blades spin pretty pretty well there's some nice detail work on the uh, the engines these exhaust engines I guess so yeah overall it's not a little bad vehicle uh, again considering that this thing came out I think originally in 1988 it's pretty much the same mold from 2001 uh, so this particular one you know, 15 years old and it still holds up pretty well reasonably well anyways um, some nice little detail work on the inside and when you fold these in they uh, hold in place pretty well so yeah overall not too bad um, so I'll mention that again these things the exhaust you know, engine things uh, they have a tendency to pop off pretty easily the legs on this thing uh, the tank treads uh, they leave a little bit to be desired um, it doesn't roll very well the uh, wheels themselves don't turn very much at all they're supposed to but when I, there's really not a whole lot of clearance on these things so there's really nothing to bite on that one turns a little bit better than the rest of these so yeah it doesn't roll very well they may loosen up in time but uh, yeah nothing too spectacular so. so the next question everybody asks is for the uh, new 25th anniversary 30th anniversary Pursuit of Cobra Revenge of Cobra Rise of Cobra all those different figures you know do they still work with these vehicles so here we have again Beachhead from the 25th anniversary line let's see if he'll fit in the cockpit He fits in there very easily, so yes, this does actually fit and work with the new 4-inch scale figures pretty easily. I would about say a little easier than with the original figures that came in this line. may have to bend the legs a little bit in this seat, get him to sit down flat enough for this canopy to, to lock in place but uh, yeah it works pretty well these uh, hinges for the front canopies man there are not much to these things I don't know if that's because it's 15 years old or if it just wasn't designed very well but uh, they come off pretty easily like I say you just lift up on it and there it just pops out so I'm not liking that too much but you know it'll work and these uh, tank treads they don't stay put very easily they have a tendency to fold up on you and then you end up with a sitting crooked looking vehicle here so watch out for that but you know other than that you know it works pretty well so put Destro back in here and him and Beach Egg and fly off.
So yeah, there you go. Destro's Dominator. So here is the Destro's Dominator, fully assembled, ready to fly. You can see the propellers, they spin really well. This is the helicopter mode right here. To change it back into the tank mode, you just press the engine part forward, you take the two wings, fold them back, and you pop the tank treads out, like so. Make sure your missile launcher is turned out in the right direction. And there it is. So, yeah. Overall, it's a, it's a cool looking vehicle. It's got a few minor problems here and there and about, but nothing to really stop you from trying to get a hold of it if you can. So, yeah. Overall, I like it pretty well. Thanks for watching the video. Like the page down below. Subscribe to us. Check out some of the other videos. Let us know what else you want to see done and what you think about things. So, yeah. Till next time, yo, Joe.